In this video, we're gonna take a look at solving energy transfer through the ecosystem. Maybe your teacher has asked you how much energy is available at a certain level, or they talk about 10% being available uh, in, from the previous uh, trophic level to the next 10% of energy is available. Today we're going to look at solving those word problems. So uh, I call it the 10% rule. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter uh, to me. But as energy moves up through levels of the food chain, only approximately 10% is available from the previous level. Now, uh, knowing the levels of the food chain along with how to classify the organisms makes this extremely easy to do. If you don't know the various levels or the words primary consumer, secondary consumer, heterotroph, autotroph, if you don't know what that means, this could be a little uh, challenging, but we're gonna walk through a couple of practice problems. Now, there are two things you may be asked, and we'll go over how to do each of them. In doing one, you can figure out the other. The first one that's very easy, and all it involves is moving the decimal. It says, how many units of energy are available at a given level? And that's simply moving the decimal point around. There's no math involved. You just move the decimal. Uh, part two, the second thing you may be asked, involves a little bit of math, but it's like first, second grade math. And if you work it nice and slow, you'll be able to get it uh, correct. How many units of energy have been lost by the time it reaches a given level? We're gonna walk through how to work both of these uh, scenarios so you know how to do each of them. That way, when you're asked on a test or a quiz, you can get the right answer. So let's jump right in. So here we have an energy uh, pyramid. We have our primary uh, producers uh, down here. We have our herbivores, which eat our primary producers, and because they are consuming the primary producers, and they are the first level that is consuming, we call these our primary consumers. Then we have our carnivores, which eat the herbivores. Now, carnivores aren't just about eating meat, it's about hunting and killing the prey and then consuming uh, that prey. A lot of people say carnivores eat meat. Well, that's true, but scavengers eat meat also, but they're not considered carnivores because they're consuming the dead carcasses that have been killed by other animals. So when you see carnivores, depending on what level of science you're in, it's not just about eating meat, it's about hunting, uh, the prey, killing the prey, and then consuming the prey. But anyway, the carnivores are the second thing they're con uh, that is consuming organisms. They're consuming the herbivores. That makes them our secondary consumers. Then our secondary carnivores are the third level, but we don't say the third uh, or uh, third dairy consumers. We call this our tertiary consumers, which means they're our third level. And then we have our quaternary consumers, which eat the secondary carnivores. So it's uh, pretty easy. So we know 10% is transferred at each level. In this example, all these numbers are correct. 10% of 100 is uh, 10. 10% 10 of 10 is 1. 10% of 1 is 0.1. And 10% of 0.1 is point. Uh, zero one. Here we have an example uh, where it is wrong. This number is actually wrong. This is from InfoBase Publishing. Uh, obviously made a simple error, but that's okay. They have 100%. So I start with 100. And then all I need to do to figure out how much energy is available, I move my decimal one place to the left. So when I do that, when I start my decimal here and move it one place to the left, I wind up with 10. And I have my decimal place right there. When I move it one place to the left, I wind up with one. And with my decimal right here, 1.0. Uh, and then when I move my decimal one place to the left, the problem that I run into is, well, it's not really a problem. This is where they made uh, their error. You wind up with 0.1, not 0 0.01. So they made a mistake there. Now that's the percentage. You may be saying, how does this work with numbers? It works the same way all you do is simply adjust the decimal, and you may have to do a little bit of math. Let's jump into some word problems right now and see how this is applied. So in the primary producer level, there's 5,000 units of energy. Okay, so they give us a number here, 5,000. That's going to be important, so I'm going to circle that. How much energy is available by the time it reaches the tertiary consumers? So it tells me I need to get to the tertiary consumers. So I'm going to go ahead and get there. And here is an illustration. It doesn't really matter what the illustration is. We could do this on a blank uh, food pyramid if we wanted to. It makes no difference. So it tells us here there's 5,000 units of energy. And the first level are my primary producers, also known as my autotrophs. They do photosynthesis and harness power from uh, the sun. So we have 5,000. How much is here? Well, I move my decimal one place to the left tells me here there's 500. 
Move my decimal one place to the left as I move up to the next level. There's 50. Move my decimal one place to the left as I move up to the next level, which is 5. Move my decimal one place to the left as I move up to the last level, and I wind up with 0.5. Now, I figured out all this, but I still haven't answered the question. The question is, how much energy is available by the time it reaches the tertiary consumers? Well, we need to figure out where my tertiary consumers are. I know tertiary consumers mean my third level consumers. These are not consumers. These are producers, which means these are my primary consumers or my first level consumers because they are consuming the autotrophs. Now, they are the first thing that's consuming other organisms, which means when these organisms consume these organisms, these are our secondary consumers, which means when this fish eats these smaller fish, this is my tertiary consumer, which means this is my quaternary consumer or my fourth level consumer. So I'm looking right here because it says how much energy is available by the time it reaches a tertiary consumer. And I can see that right here, my answer is five. There are five units of energy available by the time it reaches the tertiary consumer. Very easy, no math involved. All I did was move the decimal one place to the left. Each level I moved up. All right, so let's move on. Let's look at another word problem. In this one, we have a different food pyramid. It doesn't really matter. You don't even need a food pyramid. I'm just doing this as an illustration. It says in the, in the primary producer level, there's 7,400 units of energy. So I'm going to put that right here. And then it says, uh, so I circle that. That's important. How much energy is available by the time it reaches the first set of carnivores? And how much has been lost? So we're looking to see how much is available and how much has been lost. And we need to make sure that we answer both of these. Uh, in my class, there is no uh, half credit, it's all or nothing. So if my students did not answer the second part of this question, they would be awarded zero uh, marks. And they learn very quickly to answer all parts of the question. There's no reason to get half credit on this. You should be able to do both, because we said earlier, once you figure out one, you can figure out the other. So the first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and fill this in. I know this is gonna be 740 because I'm going to move my decimal one place to the left. When I go to the next level, I'm moving one, uh, the decimal place one point to the left. That becomes 74. One place to the left makes this 7.4. One place to the left, 0.74. Okay, now that I have all these, I can answer the question. So the first part is how much energy is available? That's easy. There is uh, 74. 74 units of energy are available by the time it reaches the first set of carnivores. How do I know that? Okay, so this is my primary producer. These are my heterotrophs because they're consuming the vegetation. These are feeding on these other organisms, which are meat. So therefore, there are primary consumers or our first level consumers. So that's how we uh, know that. Doesn't matter that there are the secondary consumers. It doesn't ask for the first set of consumers. It asks for the first set of carnivores, and you should know that carnivores hunt, uh, kill, and consume uh, their prey. So you gotta watch out for that. And that's why I said earlier, if you know how to classify these organisms, it makes it a lot easier, especially as you get to some of these higher level uh, questions. Okay, how much energy has been lost? Very easy. We started with 7,400 and we wound up to 74. So somewhere along here, we've lost some energy. How much has gone missing? Very easy. You're gonna take your starting amount, which was uh, 7,400, and we're gonna subtract 74, and that will tell us how much energy has uh, been lost. Doing a little bit of uh, first grade uh, math, you can uh, figure uh, this out, and it comes out to 7,320. Uh, six, 7,326 plus 70 is 7,396. Uh, when you tack on the four, that gets us back to the 7,400. So I know that this is uh, the right answer doing some uh, mental math. Not too, uh, not too hard there. If your teacher lets you use a calculator, definitely take the 15 extra seconds it takes to punch into the calculator and get the right answer. Uh, you know, this is science, not math. Work smarter, not harder. That's my motto anyway. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at another uh, word problem. 
So at the level of the secondary consumers, there's 250 units of energy available. How much was there originally? Okay, so it's asking about the secondary consumers and it tells us how much uh, there is. It says there is 250 units of energy. So these are my autotrophs. These are my primary uh, consumers because they are the first thing consuming the uh, vegetation, my herbivores. These are my secondary consumers. They are the second uh, organisms consuming. This is my tertiary uh, consumer. And it tell, all I'm really worried about is this level uh, right here. And it tells me there was 250 units of energy. Well, how much did we start with? How do we, how do we know? Well, how did I get to 250 here from this level to this level? Well, I moved my decimal one place uh, to the left, which means here, I had to have 2,500. Because if I moved my decimal one place to the left, that would give me 250. Well, how much did I have here that would allow me to get to 2,500? Easy, 25,000. All I'm doing is, as I go down, I move my decimal one place to the right instead of the left. When I go up, I move it to the left. Here's my decimal right here, 2,500. If I move it to the right, that gives me 25,000. When I go, from the first level to the second level, I move my decimal one place to the left, that gets me 2,500, and it is that easy. So how much energy was there originally? There was 25,000 units of energy originally. No math involved there, just simply moving the decimal. All right, let's take a look at this one again. This time, same pyramid, but it doesn't matter. And we have 325 units of energy. How much has been lost at this level? Okay, so this one can be a little more complex, but we should be able to figure it out. They give us the number 325. We're dealing with our primary consumers. We're looking at how much energy has been lost at this level. So our primary consumers, we know these are our primary consumers. They're the first organisms consuming other uh, animals. And we know there's 325 here, which means how much was here? 3,250. Simply moving that decimal uh, point to the right as I move down, uh, finishing uh, this off, even though I don't uh, need to, it's always a uh, good practice. This becomes 32.5, because I moved my decimal one place to the left. Here's my decimal, I'm gonna move it one place to the left again, and here I have 3.25. How much has been lost? Okay, so I had a number here, and I wanna know how much has been lost by the time I reach this level. This was my starting amount, this is what I finished with. So here, we go in and we do some uh, first or second grade uh, math. And uh, you can always punch it in your calculator. I don't have a calculator uh, handy, but that's okay. Uh, I know this becomes a four. 12 minus three is nine. So 2,925, I uh, re reverse that. 2,925 plus 300 gets me to 3,225. Tack on the remaining 25 gets me back to 3,250. So how much energy has been lost? At this level, the primary consumers, we have lost 2,925 units of energy. Okay, so the 10% rule, let's take a look at another one. This one, we have a blank um, pyramid, but that's okay. Um, this is a question I give my students, which causes them to put all, everything uh, together. And this was more of a simple problem uh, that I gave them. Um, so if you're doing your homework and you don't know how to do it, uh, good thing you're watching this video because I'm gonna walk you through how to do, uh, do it right now. So it says the following ecosystem contains the following organisms. We have hawks, we have grass, snakes, mice, and grasshoppers. How much energy is lost by the time it reaches the tertiary consumers if the grass produces 1,400 units of energy? Okay, the first thing we need to do here is we need to write down what our organisms are. So we know grass comes first, and we know grass comes first because they do photosynthesis. They are our autotrophs. Well, what's gonna eat the grass? Well, that would be grasshoppers. So I'm gonna abbreviate the rest of these because I don't want this video going on uh, forever. That makes this 140. All I'm doing is moving that decimal one place to the left, which means this will be 14, this will be 1.4, and this will be 0.14. Now I can uh, do the rest. So I've done uh, grass, 
and I have done grasshoppers. What's going to eat the grasshoppers? Well, it's either going to be mice or snakes. Now, what is more likely, that the mice are going to eat the grasshoppers or the snakes are going to eat the grasshoppers? And that's going to be mice. Now, remember, this is a food chain, not a food web. In a food web, uh, snakes might be eating grasshoppers as well, but this is a food chain. It's only showing one relationship, not all relationships, which means this is going to be my snakes, because snakes are going to eat the mice. What's going to eat the snakes? That would be uh, the hawk or the hawks. And it says hawks. So that will be that. Now it says how much energy is lost by the time it reaches the tertiary consumers. Now I know tertiary consumer means my third level consumer. So my these are my primary consumers or my first level consumer. They are the first thing uh, consuming other organisms, which means these are my secondary consumers, which means this is my tertiary consumer. I have 1.4. I started with 14,000. Now, you don't need uh, to write this out. This is very easy to do. What's 1,400 minus 1? That gives me a 1399. And then I need to minus 0.4. That gives me 1398.6. Attack on the 0.4. That gets me the 1399. I add the 1. That gets me back to 1400. So how much energy has been lost? Going from here to here, 1,398.6 units of energy. So that looks uh, complex, but it's really not. Using a little bit of common sense, we can figure out this ecological uh, pyramid. The numbers, there's no math involved to figure these out. Um, there is just a little bit of math, but if you have a calculator, punch it in, it's going to give you the right answer. Um, if you're going to use a calculator, I strongly advise you enter it twice just to make sure you get the same answer. If you try to punch that decimal and it doesn't go through, you're going to get the wrong answer. Not because you didn't know what you were doing, but you didn't punch that decimal uh, point hard enough. So if you do it twice and you get the same answer, more than likely you entered it on your calculator uh, correct. So a lot of question. the other question that comes up is, where does the rest of the energy go? It, only 10% transferred, well, where does the rest go? Well, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed, which means we're missing 90%. Where does it go? And how does it start over again? If the you know primary producers are using these nutrients, where, where does it come? Where does the nutrients come from? They don't magically appear. So as we move up, we see there's only 10%. Well, the rest of the energy is lost as heat. And this is because of what we call metabolic processes, breathing, creating um, ATP, creating uh, the energy. The re and then heat is a byproduct of that. So the rest is given off as heat. And then we have decomposers, which are really uh, nice. And this is what makes the whole thing possible. Notice they're off to the side of our food pyramid here. And that's because when the autotrophs die, the decomposers are going to break them down and recycle the nutrients back into the soil. When the primary consumers die, there's still nutrients trapped. Decomposers will break it down. And that's why they're off to the side, because they're going to break down each of the organisms at this level when they die. So that is how the 10% rule works. Now that you know how to solve it, you are more than likely to get a high score on your quiz. If you have any questions, you can always post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next video.